If you've ever spent a night outdoors in cold weather and woken up feeling damp, chilled, and, well, strangely more tired than when you lay down, you already understand the problem this story is about. For all our modern insulation claims, lab-tested temperature ratings, and space-age fabrics, many sleeping bags still fail at the one task that actually matters in the field. Keeping a human being warm, dry, and functional after prolonged exposure. During the Cold War, failure was not an inconvenience. It was a liability. Soldiers weren't weekend campers. They were expected to sleep in forests, tundra, ruined cities, and wet ground for weeks at a time, often without resupply. That pressure produced a bedroll system that refused to fail, not because it was clever, but because it was brutally honest about how cold actually works. The Cold War Mindset Behind the Bedroll Eastern Bloc and NATO forces approach sleep very differently than modern outdoor brands. The priority was not weight savings or packability. The priority was predictability. Soviet-era bedroll systems, especially those used from the late 1950s through the 1980s, were designed around a simple truth. The ground steals heat faster than the air. Moisture is more dangerous than cold, and a tired soldier cannot afford delicate equipment. The bedroll was not a single bag, but a layered sleep system consisting of a dense wool or cotton-filled quilt, a canvas outer shell, and a ground barrier that doubled as a moisture shield. Each component had a job, and none of them pretended to do everything at once. So, why did wool and cotton outperform modern synthetics in real conditions? Well, modern sleeping bags, you see, rely heavily on hollow synthetic fibres or down clusters to trap air. In controlled conditions, this works quite well, but out in the field, it often doesn't. Cold War bedrolls used heavy wool batting or cotton padding because those materials, frankly, retained their insulating value even when damp. Wool fibres, interestingly enough, continue to trap heat even when wet and cotton, though it's slow to dry, spreads moisture evenly rather than allowing it to pool right up against the body. Soldiers sweating during the day, then bedding down in freezing temperatures at night, well, they created moisture inside their sleep system no matter how careful they were. The bedroll, you know, accepted that reality and worked with it instead of pretending it wouldn't happen. Here's the ground insulation advantage modern bags still ignore. One of the most overlooked aspects of the Cold War bedroll was its emphasis on ground separation. Modern sleeping bags really assume the user will carry a foam or inflatable pad. But Cold War doctrine assumed pads would be lost, punctured, or just unavailable. So, as a result, the bedroll itself incorporated dense layers that resisted compression. Even when the user's body weight flattened the insulation, enough structure remained to slow heat loss into the earth. This is why, you know, many modern bags feel warm on a cot, but brutally cold on frozen ground. They depend on loft that disappears the moment you lie down. The old bedroll was heavy, sure, but it did not collapse into uselessness. Durability as a thermal feature. Durability was not just about longevity, it directly affected warmth. Canvas shells resisted sparks, abrasion and moisture intrusion far better than modern ultralight fabrics. A small tear in a modern sleeping bag can become a cold air intake 
that ruins the entire system. Cold War bedrolls could be dragged across concrete frozen soil or vehicle floors without losing structural integrity. When you understand that heat retention depends on sealing out wind and managing moisture, the value of that toughness becomes, well, obvious. You know, a bag that survives ten years but fails in one bad night is not a survival tool. Why do modern sleeping bags still lose in prolonged cold exposure? Well, modern designs, they're optimized for comfort during short planned outings. But Cold War systems, on the other hand, were optimized for endurance. Many modern bags are honestly rated for survival, not for function. You see, surviving a night is not the same as waking up capable of work. Cold War bedrolls, they aimed to preserve body heat slowly and consistently, allowing the sleeper to recover energy. That difference, it really matters when cold exposure lasts weeks rather than just hours. Lightweight insulation, it breaks down, clumps or shifts over time. You know, heavy natural materials they degrade far more slowly under repeated compression and moisture cycling. It's quite fascinating, really. So, applying Cold War principles today in practical terms, it's really quite interesting. And, you know, you don't need to find an original military bedroll to apply these lessons. To start, separate your sleep system into layers, each with specific roles. Use a robust ground barrier, like a closed-cell foam mat, or perhaps a folded wool blanket, beneath everything else. It makes a world of difference. When it comes to choosing insulation, well, it's important to pick something that retains warmth, even when it's damp even if it weighs a bit more. You should also add a durable outer shell or bivy that blocks wind and traps heat all without relying on those fragile coatings. It's a smart approach, really. Now, if you're sleeping in cold, wet environments, it's actually better to ventilate slightly rather than sealing yourself in completely. You see, even during the Cold War, Doctrine accepted a bit of heat loss in order to prevent dangerous moisture buildup. Here are some field-tested steps that, well, still work today. First, always lay down a ground barrier, even if it feels a bit excessive at the time. Next, put your insulation on top of that barrier, not directly on the earth itself. It's also important to keep your outer shell just a little loose, so you avoid compressing the insulation. And of course, change out of any damp clothing before you sleep, even if it means braving a few cold minutes. If you find that moisture has accumulated overnight, make sure to air out your system whenever possible. And remember, these steps aren't just modern hacks. They've stood the test of time. These are standard practices, you know, pulled directly from decades of military cold weather experience. Why this knowledge still matters. The Cold War bedroll, well, it refused to fail because it was designed for reality, not just marketing claims. It acknowledged human sweat ground cold, repeated use, and honestly, neglect. Modern sleeping bags are sure impressive tools, but many still lose out because they ignore the conditions that actually break insulation systems over time. For serious historians and survivalists, this is not just nostalgia. 
It is, in fact, a reminder that the best designs come from hard lessons learned when failure simply was not an option. If you found this breakdown useful, do subscribe to Warfield Survival. Share this episode with someone who still trusts temperature ratings a bit too much, and stay with us as we keep digging into the forgotten systems that quietly kept people alive when history was cold, wet, and, well, unforgiving.